This review will focus on pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension often presents with syncope, dyspnea, and fatigue. Pulmonary hypertension is an elevation in the pulmonary arterial pressure greater than 20. There are multiple etiologies or causes. We break those up into five groups. Group one, known as pulmonary arterial hypertension. Group two is often caused or due to left heart disease. Group three is secondary to lung disease and or hypoxia. And group four is chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension or CTEF and pulmonary artery obstructions. And group five is multifactorial. The first step in diagnosis is ultrasound or an echo. The best test or confirmatory test is a right heart catheterization. The gold standard for ruling out CTEF is a VQ scan. So now that you've done the right heart cath, you have some results. You have the mean pulmonary arterial pressure that's greater than 20. You have some form of pulmonary hypertension. We just have to figure out which form that is in particular. If you've done the right heart cath, and the mean pulmonary arterial pressure is less than 20, you do not have pulmonary hypertension. So second, we look at the pulmonary arterial wedge pressure or the PAWP. If it's greater than 15, start thinking about group two heart or group five multifactorial. If the pulmonary arterial wedge pressure is less than 15, then start thinking about groups one arterial, three lung, four CTEP and five multifactorial. Moving down to the left, we know that with a pulmonary arterial wedge pressure greater than 15, the patient will either have group two or five or a combo of these. Check the pulmonary vascular resistance. If it's less than three, you have post capillary groups two or five. If it is greater than three, think a combined picture of two and five. The most important takeaway from this slide is you have to continue pulmonary hypertension medications inpatient. If you don't, the patient could have rebound pulmonary hypertension leading to right-sided heart failure. Now that we know we have to continue the meds inpatient, we will discuss a specific treatment for pulmonary hypertension. For group two, which is pulmonary hypertension secondary to heart disease, the game plan is to diurese. For group three, which includes lung disorders, oxygen in addition to supportive measures is the treatment for group three. And then we come to these medications, which are primarily used in groups one and four. Of course, all patients with CTEF should be evaluated for thrombectomy. Nonetheless, here are the medications we use for groups one and four. So daphanil and other PDE5 inhibitors they can cause headache and hypotension. And of note, PDE5 inhibitors should be avoided in the setting of nitrate use. These two in combination can cause life-threatening hypotension. Bocentin and other endothelial receptor antagonists can cause liver toxicity, so make it a good habit to check LFTs every three months. Eprostenol are an other Prostacyclin agonists, these can cause local induration in surrounding erythema localized to an injection site. And finally, Rio Siguat is a guanolate cyclase stimulator and should not be taken with PDE5 inhibitors or nitrates. That's all. Thank you so much for watching.